seven years old, you know, since I saw Saturday night's main event and saw the Hulkster, you know, um, when I was in high school, I was in the homecoming court. I didn't win King, but I was in the homecoming court. And as we're marching in the gym for the big parade, they said, uh, you know, Nick Dinsmore wants to be a WWE wrestler someday, WWF at the time. And a girl that was uh, two grades behind me came up to me in the hall one day and said, uh, my dad's got a wrestling school right here in, in Southern Indiana. And that was the nightmare Danny Davis. And when I was 19, I started training with uh, Danny Davis. Um, which eventually became OVW at the time. It was just the Nightmare Danny Davis School of Wrestling. And then I started training in 96. Um, in 98, I think, is when he partnered with WWE and became the training facility for the developmental talent. Um, and then the first crowd was Batista and Brock Lesnar and John Cena, Randy Orton, uh, Shelton Benjamin, but Victoria. And by that time, I had about three years of experience. So I was kind of like a player coach, working with them in practice and working with them, you know, at the events. And then from there, I, I had I'd wrestled for WCW also. I did the very first Brian Pillman show, the very first match on the very first Brian Pillman Memorial show, and I got mm -hmm. noticed by Terry Taylor. Okay. Um, I wrestled for USWA in their last seven... Let me just seven, stop you there real quick, Eugene. Talk about Brian Pillman, right? Dark Side of the Ring just had the thing on Brian Pillman. Mm -hmm. An honest opinion. Me and Farrell go back and forth with it on other show, right? So sure. Pillman, to me, was a great wrestler, but I always felt he was a very secondary, third-level like, wrestler. He wasn't a main event guy where Farrow thinks he was a really top-level guy. Thoughts on Pillman? I can't punish him for his booking. That's how I look at it. I still feel he was great. I, I think he was a main event talent. I don't know that he was written into a main event spot. That's my But, I mean, he, he, he transcended at a time when the Internet was just sparking. I mean, he, he crossed all the levels and, like, became a star mm -hmm. on his own, you know, yeah. without being under contract, you know. Right. Definitely phenomenal. Right. When you, you said you were about three years in at OVW when that legendary class came oh through my that God. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you, what was your impressions when these guys first walked through the door? The young Randy Orton, the young Batista, the young Brock Lesnar, the young John Cena. Are you hearing this list? That's crazy. I mean, what was this? Did you realize these guys were all going to be big timers right away? Or Well, there was also several other guys that didn't make it, but were just enormous physical specimens. Okay. There was a guy that was two, there was bodybuilders, there was, you know, all, all the other kinds of athletes and i never thought that i would make it to wwe but i thought i could be an ovw wrestler and help train these guys and i, and I enjoyed it mm -hmm. and then when i ended up getting signed to a contract in 99 developmental contract I was like oh my gosh but it was kind of like i was going to be the the tackling dummy and the guy to work with them in the ring and rip rogers and danny davis and jim Cornette would kind of tell them what to do on the sidelines um and then as time progressed and i just kept getting better and kept helping the, the new class come in and I saw that uh, people would often complain about living in Louisville or wrestling for, you know, not Monday Night Raw, you know, you know, upset that they're working for WWE, but they're not, you know, huge stars, complain, and all of a sudden they get called up. So uh, I tell my students now, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So I told Doug Basham, one half of the Basham brothers, I said, I think I'm going to quit and try to go to Japan, which I had no intention of doing because a i didn't know anybody in japan and b i was living at home you know i, I drove maybe two hours to the longest show i mean it's perfect place for me in my hometown doug told dean malenko dean told johnny ace johnny ace told vince and all of a sudden I'm, I'm sitting in a meeting with vince mcmahon so about six months before that meeting rip rogers his son has autism he comes to me and says what about a wrestler that you know isn't very social he can't put the square peg in the square hole can't tie the boots but the minute the bell rings he can do stuff he saw on tv flawlessly because he's a wrestling fan he knows all the trivia, he knows all the history, he knows everything about it. So I kept that in the back of my head. And uh, at the time in Louisville, they would send the agents down every month. And I pitched it to the agents like Dean and uh, Arn Anderson fit. And they're like, well, wrestling's kind of gone beyond that gimmicky stuff. We, we don't do that anymore. Okay. Hmm. So every now and then the writers would come down. So writers come down and I pitched it to them. No, no, Vince wouldn't do that. He wouldn't like that. So I'm sitting in that meeting with him. Vince is there. Stephanie McMahon's there. Vince goes, I want to get back to character-based wrestling. And I just spit out the character. Great, we'll start on Monday. <laughs> he liked it right away. Well, I, I, I think I was at a point in That's my career right. that I either needed to do something and, okay. and try or, or, get, or, or get released. Right. You know? Right. Um, and just so happened, Steve Austin walks in. It was February of 2004. He was, Austin came back for something. And uh, Vince goes, Steve, you ever seen this guy wrestling? And he goes, no, I don't think so. I said, well, I was trained by Danny Davis because I knew that Danny and Austin had a friendship in Dallas when they wrestled in Dallas. And he looks and goes, oh, it's probably, probably one of the best then. And it was like that vote of confidence that, you know, and then they put me in the great booking by putting me with, uh, as Eric Bischoff's nephew. So I had instant credibility. Right. And then they put me with William Regal. Right. Because I was never extremely strong on cutting the promos. So Eugene didn't have to be. 
and Regal could cover for me. Sure. And a lot of times he, he could just be the straight man and do everything and get it, and I could throw the little lines in there and be comedy. Did, did you have trepidations about this role? Did Bischoff have trepidations about being involved in this type of role, or was it just like everybody's on board, let's just do this? I mean, I, I don't think so. Uh, I think, you know, it was written, you know, the special kid's going to be ne uh, Bischoff's nephew just to kind of knock him. But to me, he was he was all in. He was, all right, let's do it. And, and Regal was just coming back after a long, a long time off an injury, and he was ready to go. Um, Cornette and Danny Davis were the ones that were really like, you know, are you sure you want to do this? I mean, this, this might not be, and I was like, you know, this might be my one opportunity because I don't know that I would get a second one. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just going to run with it. Mm -hmm. And the thing was is I'd wrestled at that point for eight years. And I say often, you know, I was, I was a 10-year overnight success <laughs> because I would Rip Rogers, what I'd be like, you know, make the mistakes now, learn from them so you don't make them again. And when I got there, they gave me a little bit, and I did good. They yeah. gave me a little more. I did good. I started to get over. And I just I was at a point where I could go out and wrestle and not have to worry about the wrestling and just concentrate on having fun and being the character. And really, it was just, they say that the characters are something inside of you. And it was just like me remembering when I was a kid how I felt about wrestling. If I was excited, I'd be excited. Or if, you know, kids get yelled at, you know, get kind of scared, whatever. And I just try to bring out those emotions and just try to connect with the fans. And it was at a time when... It was post NWO, post Steve Austin, but everybody still wanted to be a cool, strong heel. I don't want to sell. I want to get all my shit in. I want to do all my stuff. And then I just went out there. I wanted to sell and do comedy. Because mm. at the time, Hurricane was the only kid's character, and the brands were split. So I knew that there was one show that didn't have a kid's character, didn't mm. have a comedy character. Gotcha. And so I just, I just ran with it. They, and, and the one thing that really helped me was uh, the writer, Brian Gerwick, that wrote a lot of the rock stuff. He could write for Eugene. He knew exactly how to write for Eugene. And um, they actually wrote a movie for Eugene. Movie? Yeah. Okay. You, you ever see Big, Big Show's movie, Knucklehead? Yes. Or that was you. Yep. Hold. But I went, I went off and got myself released before I could do, do any of the acting. <laughs> what so. are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Let's go back a little bit. Yep. How are your parents? Hey, Mom, Dad, I think I just want to be a wrestler. What? What do they say? My mom goes, you better do it because you don't want to live, li live your life and be a wish I had. You don't, you don't want to you know, be... Awesome. For 45 years old and be like, damn, I wish I would have tried that when I was 19. Right. Wow. Right. And that was just it. I just wanted to try it. And it was something where I did pretty good in a small independent company in, in Louisville, Kentucky, and in southern Indiana. And then when WWE came in, you know, I, I, got, I got to know those guys. So when they all got called up, I knew everybody in the locker room. And it was just something where a lot of good things fell in place, and I was surrounded by a lot of good teachers. And I just, you know, worked hard. How does it feel to, like, achieve your dream like that? I mean, you, you – you did it. Yeah. It's amazing, right? Like, I got the action figure. I got the teddy bear. <laughs> I was in the ring with The Rock. I was in the ring with Hulk Hogan. I pinned Vince McMahon. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. WrestleMania 21 is one of my favorite. I sent it to him this morning where Hogan comes to, to save you after those terrible, those freaking Arab villains. That's right, those Arab villains. They were beating on Eugene. <laughs> it was terrible. The music hits. The place goes bonkers. That's what a crazy. great moment. Oh, my God. I got to ask you, your OVW career, you know, I find you to be very interesting as far as the internet goes. While they usually love to destroy the entertainment aspect, a lot of these inter internet guys, they do realize what your background was with OVW. And I find it kind of amazing. You're in a very special niche with the internet as far as the way they look at you because those OVW days do add credence to everything, at least in their eyes. So mm -hmm. I, I've always found that impressive. Being a 10-time champion down there, you worked with Jim Cornette for obviously a long time. What's your impressions on Jim Cornette? How was he towards you? And is he really like this in real life? He's so combative. You know how he could be. You know, he, how was he behind the scenes for he, you? He can be, absolutely. Everything that you see on Twitter or, or see of him on any video, he, he can be. But mm -hmm. at the time, I was the top babyface, and I had probably the most experience of the OVW guys and, and the development guys, developmental guys were coming in and he wrote well for me. Mm. And I, you know, I, I was on time, my ears were open, my mouth was shut. I did what I was told as best I could. Mm. And you know, he, he, he wrote well for me. So there was four of us. It was Rob Conway, myself, Doug Basham and Danny Basham, who was the damager. And we were always kind of in the top tiers working with the developmental guys that were weaving their way through and you know, pulling off really good, exciting TV for, for Louisville. And I think it's some of that is out there, but WWE owns all the footage now, and they never really released any of it on the network, mm -hmm. just a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, a lot of stuff that I wish would get released because 
you know, then people could see more of what I did then. Yeah, plus, you get those residuals. Any, any? Re- I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Really? I, I, like with the network, I don't, I don't know what we get for that. I mean, right. if, we, if there's merchandise still out there, we get. I, I don't know because that's. We don't have a union, so uh, we can't renegotiate those. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna. You know what? We're just gonna jump into it right there. So. We grew up WWF guys, mm-hmm. and you know, don't we'll we'll talk about it. But we're huge Vince McMahon guys, and uh, yeah, you know, we are. we're a little we're 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 on the right, and Vince is oh, yeah, a little bit. falls in that. A little bit. Uh, there's a lot of pro wrestling experts that and uh, say out. Vince has taken advantage of all these old time wrestlers, mm-hmm. who now can't carry their own, and they have all these physical issues and drug issues. Uh, your feelings. Should there be full medical, even for ex-wrestlers, and does Vince McMahon owe them all this for creating, you know, creating the WWF? R.E.? I, I, I go back and forth. I, I think at a certain point, yes, because this has become a billion-dollar conglomerate, and when they, when, when they brought it upon the network, I mean, they made huge amounts of money. And then when they started doing the, the Saudi Arabian deals, they made huge amounts of money. I mean, this is a worldwide global small business because they only employ like less than 50 people and i feel like we give everything in a time span of generally four years is is, is the average career span that then we have to go through the rest of our lives with aches and pains and injuries um if we don't get it i mean i i wouldn't be bad for that but wouldn't be upset with that but i feel like it's it, it might be something that should be talked about it should be a discussion with somebody i don't know who it is I don't know if it's the government and Vince. But don't you feel like if you had a union, you'd be capped out? Like, for example, someone like Dwayne Johnson wouldn't be Dwayne Johnson if he was in that union, right? Because it would just be these cap levels, right, that, that went on with that union. And you have this whole advantage of if you get over as Eugene, which you did, you have this huge windfall that you can get out of it. If you fail, time's up. And you, maybe you're doing something else. Yeah, it's definitely you know the opportunity. Everybody gets the same opportunity, and it, it's your it's your opportunity to succeed or fail. Right. But if we destroy our bodies in the ring for this this entity that has become something on its own, you know, I, it feels like at some point we're all in a family, mm. and we've contributed to the family. And it would be nice just to, as the years go by, to be taken care of a little bit, not a lot. Just you know, like the guys that play what is it four years in the NFL. They get a little pension, you know, right. a little money, just something. Right. Because right. there's less WWE superstars throughout history than there are NFL players. There's a, a huge number amount of NFL players, but yet they can all get a little something if they play X amount of years. I don't know. And to your point, there's a small lifespan for a pro wrestler as far yeah. as being over, right? It's yep. not that long. The reason why I would understand, and I do understand his point of view, is, is I also believe that if there ever is to be some sort of correction with these sort of things, it should be judged on a case-by-case basis. His opinion is very valid. He worked for them for years, and he also worked with OVW, which was a subsidiary of theirs, which was the pre-NXT thing. He's He's got a right to feel this way. Stop but, using big words like subsidiary. Sorry, right? Mar- sorry bro. i got to, you know, reevaluate my, uh, you know, grammar. <laughs> but... Um, my point being, though, is, is is that what do you do with other guys who, some of them worked for Crockett. They didn't even work for Vince. Vince is supposed to pay for them now all these years. I think it should be based on a case-by-case thing. It would definitely have to be. I mean, because like, like you were saying, in OVW, I was taking bumps and getting beaten up by B- Batista when he was stiff as hell and beating Vince's people up. Vince's future cash and, with Yeah, those guys. and, and I, I contributed to you know guys Absolutely. like Cena and Brock and those guys. Not I was the only one, but I was one of them in there. And Absolutely. It, it yeah. would be nice. The growth process, you're part of that yeah. physically, I not wanna, just I, with I, I want to talk to so you th- of, that, of that list of guys when Orton was there. Oh. How did you feel about Orton? Did you feel like, oh, this is bullshit, this guy's coming off a cowboy? Was he ahead of the, the rest of them, that class, though, as far as a wrestler when he first got there? He had to be. Or had to be ahead or, wait of a minute. Or better yet, did you feel ring. as a guy who made, you know, you, you, you worked your ass off, and here comes Randy Orton, all or Ace's <laughs> son, and he's walking right in there. I mean, right. what's your thoughts there? I, 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 I love Randy, and I did at the time, because yeah, that was somebody that I could wrestle with. All of them, each guy, I could figure out what are their strengths, and let's play to their strengths, let's hide their weaknesses, and right. let's have good matches with everybody. Well, you did a great um, job with Le- Leviathan at the time. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, well, I, I, worked with, I worked with him, and I knew what, what he did well, and, yeah. and we just kept it in those parameters. Was and, he somewhat dangerous in the early days as far as you know? No, no he wasn't dangerous. He was just r- rugged and just yeah. stiff, you know, and, and it's yeah. like, 
like, yeah. I mean, it's, he wasn't dangerous, and he didn't, he never hurt me. But those guys still forearms with all that muscle behind it, and if they don't hit it exactly right, it's it's going to it's going a little. Not hard. knowing what you know now of that list, who did you pick to come out wow. as the cream of the crop? Nice. I don't know, like. When I first saw Batista, I was like, oh, my God, this guy's enormous. Yeah. But then yeah. we would have promo days where we would just get in the ring and somebody would interview somebody, and Cena was by, by far off the charts phenomenal. Really? He can make you cry. He can make you laugh. He can make you angry. And they would just they would try to stump him. Okay, you've got a, a, a four-way Mario Kart match against Obi-Wan Kenobi and, 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 like, all these fictional characters, and he would just nonstop, just on, on point, just cutting promos on people. Mm. I think they had him in a, in a match with his own nuts one time, and he cut a promo on his own nuts. That's pretty good. And it was like, it was it just on the spot. What, he couldn't like, see them? Oh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. I can't take a <laughs> Women's Revolution, or Evolution, sorry. Yeah. Did you see that coming out of OVW, right? Because you had some really top-level women out of there, too, Well, right? not, not so much when I was OVW, but when I was a coach at the Performance Center is when they first hired Sasha Banks and, and Charlotte and Bailey. Mm. And I remember... Uh, Charlotte was kind of upset one day. She, she wasn't – there might have been other coaches there that might have been a little bit harder on her and didn't build her up, and she, she was thinking of quitting. And I told her, I said, are you kidding me? I said, you're the best one here. You're going to make it. You're going to be great. And she told me later, like, it was that boost of confidence that just – she pushed through it, and she was having some tough times with, you know, family issues and all the things that went on. And, you know, I, I just said, like, keep going. You're doing well. She's a phenomenal athlete. Great. Charlotte, very sensitive in real life, Charlotte Flair. Just... I, I, not not that I saw, but I mean, it was different because I was a coach. I wasn't I wasn't one of the other wrestlers, so I was kind of seen differently, and I would only see him a couple Mike, hours a Mike's day. Mike's worried that she keeps going to the doctor because people criticize her her looks and stuff. That you know, she's getting. I mean, you're talking stuff. to me. Hey, again, the probably the greatest women's wrestler, and I I, all, I, I also so. said she challenges a father to be one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I say too. slow down with that, but, but she's but she's, they, she's, she's social great. media. I, I see they're ripping this girl apart, woman apart. I apologize. Yeah, the, and it's it's not right. The it's smart right. ones are are killing Charlotte Flair. I, I don't know. I, it's it's <laughs> what that, I, I couldn't imagine being a woman, and and <laughs> because they they their their standards of, of what they have to look like all the time yeah. and be like as I, much different than men i wouldn't want that plan. and then the pressure how, of people yeah, yeah. how much shit that. did you take on social media oh i, I usually repost I, 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 just, I, just, <laughs> I, I, I never blocked anybody i'm like okay say whatever you want you know babe root's a pretty good player that's yeah. this guy yeah, yeah, that's freaking great that's uh, we'll, great. we'll be right back with pro wrestling superstar eugene